Welcome to Meta Analysis for Hedgehogs. Let's check this uh, Gozi Ursnev sample today that I tweeted about um, a few days ago. So it's pretty interesting um, from a static analysis perspective how to um, unpack everything and like find out the infection chain. Now, that's the tweet, um, and here we have our Gozi sample. What you need mostly for this is Notepad++, plus plus. so let's check it in Notepad++. Plus plus. Um, if you don't have a JS extension, you may want to set the language to JavaScript. It's JScript, actually, um, and you can see immediately um, if you see just one line, turn on the um, word wrap. Let's see if I find it here. Uh, you, word wrap. You might only see this. So um, turn that on and you get this. And then you realize oh, there's a lot of, a very big string in there. Um, and at some point, more at the end, there is a, a second string. It's kind of different here. Um, the first one is all small case letters, and this is um, all hex. So let's see. And here we have a, um, Let's say the main part of that. Like previously, these these strings are just stored into variables, and this is now actual code that does something. And um, I recommend to put that into a beautifier uh, like this one. Let's put it to an empty state here. In this, um, you copy paste that. Do not copy and paste the big strings before that. Um, the reason is that this will probably not work. Um, when I tried, the website didn't work anymore. It's just too big. But the part that like does something with those strings that um, you can copy here, and it will automatically create um, a beautified version of it. So just copy and paste that. And then um, it's a little bit better readable. We have seen there are two different strings that are that big, right? So oof, let's just check the names first because we need to know that that's one, right? So find it here. It's here. Um, that is the first first embedded string. First embedded um, place all. So that just that we know what this does, um, and we can immediately see there is something going on with the registry. So they are using the um, um, HKCU software and then something else that is as it seems the username of that system so we have here a registry key let's name it registry key where something is done so replace that one and that contains at this point the username. Um, also, that is the embedded embedded string. Replace that all. Now we know. Um, okay, so 
it seems like this is reading the embedded string, taking a substring of that. Um, taking a substring of that and then puts it in here. That is the actual registry data that's put into the registry value. So that's the reg data. And this part is the registry key with the username. And then this part is um, the registry value, um, the, the name with, with that contains this data. So what is that name? This is just a, um, a counter. It's a counter and it's incremented by one. So we will name it um, reg value counter. So, um, and we can see that the string this embedded string is kind of spliced up into uh, substrings of forty of four thousand bytes, and then it's put into H key HKCU software username and counter, and then we will expect to see that um, um, the malware hides in a registry this way. And down below, um, it's doing um, something else. It, it is now in adding another string to the username one. So we have username and then appended one. And uh, then it does the same with the second embedded, which is this one, um, the second embedded string in there. Okay, so we know already, keep that in mind, note that down. Um, okay, two kind of encoded strings saved in the registry in those, um, in that area here. Um, and here is a, that's PowerShell, right? PowerShell binary or path, so. And they now execute PowerShell with this base64 encoded script. So that's the next thing we want to look at. Um, now Notepad++ can just decode base64. You may have to install a plugin, I'm not sure. Um, so. Now that's a different encoding. We can just remove the zero, the, the zero bytes um, using regular expression slash zero replace all. Now it looks better, uh, but we still need to kind of beautify that. Now I search for a beautifier for that. It, um, then it was too complicated. I just um, actually done well first of all, let's do the correct language it's powershell um just manually beautify it a bit we can replace those most of those um characters with new lines so um the only one where it doesn't make that much sense is the loop in here so and the next thing is we can replace or add a new line to that. Okay. And then, yeah, do some indentation. So we should immediately recognize that again, this kind of accesses the registry. Um, registry value that we have the registry key that we've seen before and that's again um, hkc software plus username which is taken from 
the environmental variables and then it appends one. So in this case, this deals with the appended one that's the second embedded string. Um, so the second embedded string, keep that in mind. Um, and where is this use actually? Ah, it does some conversion from uh, string to byte, which matches what we've seen that this is a, um, if you check that, it's like, oh, this one kind of uh, looks like a hex string. So let's just copy paste that part. Now, if you try to um, do the conversion from hex to ASCII, it will tell you the format is not conformed. So we need to do something else before that works. Um, and we see that here a replacement is done. Like these characters are in this string. You can see that here, um, probably to defeat some automated um, decoding systems and um, it replaces them with this uh, the content of KO. So what's the content of KO? Uh, you might think, oh, that looks complicated. It's doing some math stuff with square roots, but actually it's uh, quite easy if you realize that um, you can ignore this part here. That's a, um, you know, it's a uh, loop that will only break if this condition is true. So uh, as soon as it leaves the loop, um, KO equals 1000. So we know it's 1000, it has to be. No matter what's happening here, um, at some point, it has to be 1000. And it seems that, um, yeah, this does the, the conversion and then loads this as an assembly. So we would expect a .NET assembly if we decode this file. Now let's do the replacement here. If um, we find that, I'm going to replace that with 1000. And now we try the uh, conversion again, plugins converter hex to ASCII, and that works. So we just save that as dump one. It's a second embedded file, so let's say second embedded, and not as a text file, just a, some file, all right. And let's close that. Here's our dump. We can now open it in the NSPY because you know we expected to see a .NET executable. So let's try. And here it is. It's a DLL. So we need to know what's called. Now this is a small DLL, so there is not much to look uh, for. But oftentimes you will have to check what's actually called. And here it calls mode setup. So mode setup, that's our um, entry point to this. And what does it do? It, again, it, it reads the software and then username, th this key we are already very, very familiar with, reads that and does uh, some replacements here. And then it also uh, sets a persistence in run once by putting this PowerShell script into the run once key. So this is the persistence mechanism right here. What does it do? It also with so it seems this reads the registry. Um, the, the first embedded file from the registry loads it. Here it loads it and um, invokes the method 
diagnostics time on that and then it puts this um, PowerShell script in, into the auto run run once so that's how we get to the second file now this second string here a second the first it's actually the first this is quite big um, and because it's so big we may not be able to do that in notepad plus plus all of that um, I try replacing this in notepad plus plus and it just couldn't handle it ran out of memory so we will just save this as a text file and use Python okay that's the um, embedded first string that's a text file so we can save it like, as a text file so let's do some Python magic right here. Uh, we just open a command window and open up Python. And now we have to read the file. Embedded first. So, and the content is F read lines zero because like we just it's just the first line of all that and now we can um, verify that we got the right content um, by showing the first hundred characters and um, what we want to do now is do the replacements like this Let's replace the uppercase replace with lowercase replace. So paste that in. That is not right. Let's try again. Now that should do it. And that looks about right. And we can now um, convert that to byte array because we do not want the hex um, string, but we want to write it as, uh, well, bytes to a file eventually. So this would look like that and let's just save it uh, but obviously we should save the whole file now it's having trouble it's because it says there's a non hexadecimal number at some position i'm not sure if we missed something five there's a new line in that. How did that happen? Um, okay. Yeah, that's interesting. So let's just um, remove the new line. I don't think that has any... And now we can do that again. Save that as a byte array. Now it works. And um, we open a file for writing. That's uh, dumped, dumped three, two, I'm not sure. Um, we write this as a binary file, so 
so you say ride by array and close it. So let's check on it. Now that's the content that was written to you. The regacy and loaded by loaded by this um, DLL. So we can see that this is also a .NET DLL because it's using um, .NET specific ways to uh, run it dynamically. And if you put that in here, we immediately see lots of uh, detections on it. Okay, let's just open it in the Inspire. Uh, there it is. That's another DLL. And we see the entry point of that is diagnostics time, right? So let's open that up. And again, again, there's a um, deja vu. Um, if, if the NSPY at this point has some troubles um, loading or something, use the newest version, like older versions did not uh, cut the string. So they also had troubles with very weak strings um, and, and memory. So ran out of memory. Um, yeah, you can see that. Let's check the whole. Um, so again, we have to decode this. And what we can see here is it, oh damn. <laughs> it um, does again this replacement for the hash characters uh, with num2. What is num2? Um, that's the same trick we have seen before it's doing some math stuff, but this loop can only break if this condition um, is not true. So once num2 is 1000, it will break or out of the loop. So um, that means it's uh, the very same thing we did before. We just need to get this string out of the binary. And that's actually not that difficult. We have this internal strings and we know that's one very big string, right? So just do something like thousand characters as a threshold for the file. And that was dumb three, I guess. Does it work? Yes, break it. And we put that to a file. This will be dump four. Um, Right. Um, what does it do to that file? We see it calls um, this diagnostics PE something something method uh, on it, and this is a process injection for uh, well, run PE via run PE into this um, legit executable for Windows. So it's a Windows photo viewer executable and then calls like um, write process memory. Um, if you see these um, get thread context, read process memory, write process memory, and then resume thread, you should immediately know, okay, that's, that's process injection uh, right here. So check out the process injection graphic that I made. So you can recognize us very quick. Um, yeah, so same here. We dumped that. Um, and again, we have to replace this with 1000. And this time we may convert this to ASCII, it says again, hex format is not conformed. Um, in this case, I think it has just one zero too much. Let's do again. Oh, here. Yeah. Uh, let's replace all white space. Choose regular expression, that's white space. We replace all white space. And again, try that. Maybe that was. Yeah. 
Yeah, now it works. Okay, so it was the white space it had trouble with. Um, we just save it and we have another file. Let's put that in P Studio. Take a while to load. That's uh, the actual payload in that's injected. And if you also put that into Intesar um, and into the same virus total, um, you will see that this has some detections. Actually, just one, I think, for Kronos bot. And in Tesa, which is a good um, site to to find out the malware family, um, it also finds Kronos genes in it. So most most of them seem to be from Kronos. So um, that's our payload right here. Um, yeah, and there is not much to see to see the the files packed. So um, that is like still not the end of it, but I think it's enough for this um, session today. Now, the uh, one of the most interesting parts uh, of this Gozi sample is the quite complex infection chain. It's a fileless malware, so it um, is able to hide the payload entirely in the registry. And once the infection happened, there is no um, file on disk anymore necessary for the malware to load. Um, yeah, also run the malware and check out how it, how it looks like in the registry. Maybe I will just do it right here. It's quite interesting to watch what happens. So just open process, um, explorer, yes and process monitor yes um, i recommend for the filter to add process names um, that contain script and powershell dot exe so let's do that and watch what happens here now we run it We see the process was created for this for the J script. And yeah, here it's creating our registry um, values which contain the loader DLL as well as the payload that's loaded by that um, assembly. So if you not check the registry, can I check it here? Jump to yeah. Jump 2 will open up the registry in the right location. Um, or the, the registry editor. And here you see the uncoded payload in it. That's the payload. And in max 1 is the encoded um, the encoded DLL that does the injection. So Okay, now one last thing I want to add is um, the infection of this sample is not complete. Uh, it has a bug. Um, or let's say it's um, this is actually uh, not gauzy as it appears in the wild. Because um, I was contacted, um, after my tweet I was contacted by a security researcher who said he created this as a standalone version of Gozi, so it um, can infect the system independently from uh, any availability of the internet. If I pointed you to an actual wild sample of Gozi, it wouldn't work anymore very soon. Um, yeah, and that's already it for today, so thanks for watching and see you next time.